Hello and welcome to episode 14 of Baking Breadly. In the last video I was showing how to set up blogging uh, or blog blog system within Jekyll and I left it off where excuse me where um, uh, where I was copying in all the files and I didn't want to show you all that because it's pretty boring so I've copied all the content into their separate blog posts and this is what the current site is uh, this is it running locally and all it is is just baking breadly link which goes through to slash blog and slash blog has a title of blog and then inside is well inside all of these is the blog articles and I've got a title description and a date so if we go back so this is the home page and it's just a link in a h1 and this is what the index file is in markdown so just a hash one or h1 and then the, that's represented by a single hash and then a link around it and that's it so that's that file then uh, we have the blog and this is looping through each of the posts so we're looping through it so four posts inside posts and we have the title with the link around it the post excerpt and the timestamp for it and we're using post dot date and then a filter this vertical line allows us to pass through additional filters with this variable or this value so we're doing date to string and that produces the 23rd of Jan 2015 or you know the 1st of Feb 2015 or whatever and uh, what else so when you're going through through to these posts it comes up with the title the description or the content and the video itself so if we look at one of these posts this is episode three so let's let's switch to episode three so excuse me so you can get like an exact matching so we're using we've got our title up here uh, but you notice that it's not actually in the content even though it's up in here and that is because I've created a post template so just in the way that blog has a template single posts can have a template and pretty much anything that can that you can write this into so any layout that you can pick or you've created you can pick from so this is using the post layout and in turn the post layout is using the default surrounding layout and that's just the the doc type and the header or the head and then the body and all those kind of elements the basic stuff and what I've done is created a h1 with the page title and note that it says page title but it's actually the post title I think what happens is once you get into a single post elements start to be named differently because it's all relative to that page or to that or to that web page if you think about it it's a blog post but it's still a web page so that must be why it still says page dot title and then we've got just content and that's what's produced so page title page title title then content and it's content and of course the video is part of the content so that is all as one and that is it and we've also got our URLs working so blog slash baking breadly and I've taken the dot out I was going to put the dot dot into it and I think think it escapes it and it just turns into a hyphen or something like that or removes it but to save hassle I just remove the dot and then you can like control the URL a bit more accurately and not have faith in what the the processing system is gonna gonna do with it so yeah th that is it and I have actually committed all that stuff and pushed it up to that relative branch so now we need to merge it into master via a pull request and then merge it into GH pages and um, I think that will be it because if we look at the live site uh, bread.li 
at the moment it's just all on the home page all the videos on there and uh, wow it's taking a long time to load well i guess it is 11 different or 12 different youtube iframes so this will do it some good okay now oh, that's me looking up about date strings and formatting so let's go to github and open up Bradley and go to oh hello compare and pull request it's weird terminology but here we go enable blog so let's let's see well, let's close that and let's have a look at waffle because waffle's got our system in here our management system okay so hash 25 so I'm going to use these commits as kind of a way to summarize it um, so I added adds installation info for for site amends oh no let's leave that bit out about that sets permalink struct structure creates blog post and blog page templates transfers home page content to blog posts cool uh, and we'll put task initiated initiated from issue hash don't know how I managed to do that from hash 25 then I did that and this was development signed it myself and then I guess that was what that was then before I refreshed it. Seems a bit weird to be transferring, like swapping between the two. But I guess if I was, if I was um, working with multiple people on this, I could like manage it quite well and like assign people to it really quickly. I guess that would be quite a cool way of doing it. Enable blog, so we can just move this into completed. Um, Does that have any more references to it? So we'll merge it in. And we could delete the branch if we want to. I may just do that. Do I want to do that? Well, I guess if we've enabled the blogging system, then we can work on the master now and just continue development with fleshing it out more. That was just really like going into it. So if I just rem remind myself, I need to do git checkout master, and we're back on master. And I mean, enable blog is there on my local version. So I could like, excuse me, bring it back to back to life. But yeah. There we go. And now what we need to do is we need to do our, what is essentially our deployment method, which is merge stuff into GitHub pages. Uh, blog pages blog page 
and posts entailed in pull request hash 30. That was it. There's all our stuff. Cool. It labels development. Uh, it's already in progress because that's what we're doing. I mean, I guess that's what Waffle is doing by by moving stuff around. When you do a pull request, it just moves it straight into in progress, which is pretty cool. I like that. And merge. Cool. Let's see how that's done. Done. There we go. Episode 12. All segregated in that. We've got um I've got my uh 13th episode uploading as we speak and that reminds me to explain a little extra feature that we've got in uh that I uh that I did doing here. Just let me refresh this. Now I want to I'll, let, I'll, I'll do it through Finder. Sometimes Coda seems to have a bit of a caching problem when it comes to files. Uh, oh, no. Apologies. I didn't pull down the master. So let's do git pull. Git pull. There we go. Uh, yes, uh, I've got a directory in here called underscore drafts. And underscore drafts is exactly that. It's draft posts. And I can even change that to post layout. And this is the next post that will, or the next video that will be going up. Here's the explanation I've already made. Um, but I just need the iframe. So I'm waiting for the video to upload. And then I can just drop in the iframe. And uh, yeah, all it is is just a draft it's easy really you can you you can even have an option in there is there is an option in jekyll to turn on a a draft post so the post gets kind of put up live so you can preview it and that that must be quite useful for people if they've got quite a complicated design and they want to make sure it actually fits into their to their design correctly because you don't want to just chuck it in and then expect it all to work perfectly so that's quite a kind of neat trick I'm just going to do that git commit am changes episode 13 13 layout option git push that should hopefully push to master. Good. <laughs> I get worried it's going to move push to another branch. Okay, 13 minutes in. Kind of. That's about it with stuff. I'll tell you what I did want to try. Um, yes. Travis. Travis CI. I've got T, sorry. Uh... Do you know what? I'm I'm going to show this in another video, but this uh, this is an interesting system. It's to do with uh, testing, and you know when I um, do a pull request to GitHub Pages, uh, it doesn't tell me anywhere whether the site is working correctly, and it's it's going to work with what uh, GitHub is uh, parameters are, because what 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 is going to work locally on my machine might not work on the live site and I've had that happen to me a couple of times where the site won't build and there's something wrong and it works on my machine but it doesn't work on the actual server and that is exactly what Travis appears to test for and it even integrates directly into GitHub so you can do uh, a Travis test it will run a Travis test automatically on like a pull request and if it's green, then great. But if it's yellow, then it's like you need to go back and check. Uh, and it sounds really cool. 
and uh, not very hard to set up. But I'm not going to set it up in this video because it would be better if I encompass it in one video. Um, but this video is surprisingly short. I, I'm tempted to kind of leave it there. What are we? How are we doing for time? Yeah, fairly well. I mean, what we could quickly do is slap around a container on the default. So I'm going to do this div class container. Put that round there and then switch over to our Oh no, that's the site. We want SAS. Oh no, no, we want CSS. Ha <laughs> ha. We've got them all in separate location. So we can do dot container. And what was it? Was it at include dot container? I don't think that's right. No. We've got to check the Bourbon documentation. Or Bourbon Neat. Bourbon Neat documentation. Ha, cool. Outer container. Makes an element outer container by centering it in the viewport. Clearing all its floats and setting its max width. Hmm. So at include outer. Can I do that? Can I do? So if I do at include 100%, what does that do? Hmm? Doesn't do anything. Let's do 60%. Oh, hey. So that kind of does, it does literally 60%. So let's do 75. Looks okay. And go back to the home page. Got Flexbox stuff going on in here. It's going to be, have to be something I'm going to have to like read up on more and more. <laughs> uh, it seems a bit odd to have a, a like a massive documentation thing for uh, what is essentially just a grid system. But having all these options are going to really be beneficial in the long run. We can at least then plan for the future. not like get caught out when suddenly you go, oh, we haven't got those features in there. I kind of want to make a fight like 80%. And browser's having a bit of a struggle with rendering. Outer container makes the element makes an element uh, outer container by separating the viewport. Hmm. What's Omega? Hmm. 
Well, I'm going to leave this video short. I'm just going to like um, push up these changes. There's some mini changes. Uh, git status. Git commit. AM. Um, adds outer container to uh, yeah to default template git push all right well, I won't set up a pull request just yet, but I will explain Travis in the next video, hopefully. And then uh, once we've got that in, we can start watching out for any errors that we do when we do make pull requests. And we'll be sure in our minds that uh, the thing's going to build correctly. So I will see you then.